Joining us now is Michael Avenatti, the attorney for Stormy Daniels. And Michael, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I want to begin with that last part of the text sequence uh, in which uh, Michael Cohen says that he is with FLOTUS. He's with FLOTUS on that day in early March. Uh, you believe you know what they would have been talking about on, on that day. What do you think that is? Well, Lawrence, thanks for having me tonight. Here's what we know. We know that the First Lady landed at uh, Palm Beach Airport in Florida around 3, 3.10 p.m. that day. Uh, the plane was actually early based on the schedule. If you look at the time of that text message, it shows approximately 4.15 that afternoon. A prior report uh, in the New York Times stated that, in fact, Michael Cohen spoke with the First Lady during that trip uh, to Palm Beach. Lawrence, we think that it is fairly clear at this point that what happened here was that Mr. Davidson tipped off Michael Cohen to uh, me coming into the case. It's important to know, Lawrence, that at this point, I had not surfaced with Mr. Davidson uh, directly. Uh, I had not contacted him to alert him that I was coming into the case, and I certainly had not contacted Michael Cohen. Mr. Davidson uh, learned that through alternative means. He tipped Michael Cohen off. Uh, earlier that week, uh, which caused Michael Cohen to run into arbitration to try to get a order against my client, pre preventing her from speaking. Uh, and then he followed that up with telling Mr. Cohen that we were going to be filing our complaint. So it's pretty clear what happened. Michael Cohen wanted to try to get out in front of this with the First Lady. Uh, we don't know exactly what he told her, but they were clearly talking about my client during that weekend, as confirmed by the New York Times previously. This whole thing, Lawrence, um, stinks. It shows the efforts that Michael Cohen would go to uh, to corrupt my client's prior attorney. Uh, and it also shows that Michael Cohen and the president's prior denials for in January, February, March, and April relating to my client were absolute lies. Uh, now, I, I want to go to the, the thanks, pal, and the, these indicators of a uh, cooperative relationship between them. I have seen lawyers say that kind of thing to each other uh, many, many times, uh, being on opposing sides of cases in which, during the trial day, I have watched them try to destroy each other. Uh, there was absolutely no question uh, that each side was strenuously representing in every way they possibly could the interests of their side. Uh, and so actual friendliness uh, when uh, the bell goes off and they go back to their corners is a perfectly normal thing within the practice of law. Uh, so you, you are suggesting that there's something going on here that, that's much more important than just hearing them say thanks, pal, to each other. You're absolutely uh, right, Lawrence. This isn't just about a single text message. You have to look at the um, global facts, if you will. You have to look at all of these text message messages. You have to look at the relationship that these two lawyers had, not just as it related to my client, um, but also Ms. McDougall. Uh, the, the alleged Broidy settlement is occurring around this same time. These two lawyers were entirely too close. This was not arm's length by any stretch of the imagination. And my client's attorney, Mr. Davidson, should not have been having any contact with Michael Cohen in January of this year, and most certainly should not have been having any contact with Michael Cohen in late February or early March of this year. There was no reason for him to be reaching out to Michael Cohen in late February. There was no reason for him to be getting on the phone with Michael Cohen and Larry Rosen. Mr. Rosen was at one point going to be an attorney that came in to uh, represent Michael Cohen. My client didn't know anything about this conduct in late February or early March. And let me tell you what's even more disturbing, Lawrence. Here's what's even more disturbing. We have had to fight tooth and nail to get this information disclosed, despite the fact that my client is entitled to it. I've had to ask five, six, seven times for all of the documents that Mr. Davidson had, and I still don't have everything. We still don't have everything that we're entitled to. Mr. Davidson outright refuses to give us the text messages and the other information after March 2nd. Okay, and but just to, just, so just to be clear, the reason you have the text messages that we can read tonight is because Davidson has handed over to you the Stormy Daniels file up to a certain point in time, which does include these text messages. He gave you these text messages. 
Lawrence, he gave us those text messages after months of demanding them uh, and after serious threats by us. If he didn't give them to us, there was going to be serious consequences. He was supposed to give us everything. He then only gave us the text messages up until March 2nd. He refuses to give us an explanation as to why that is. We know for a fact that there were additional text messages after March 2nd, and he refuses to provide them without explanation. And the reason, Lawrence, is clear, and that is that if you think the these text messages are bad. Those text messages, I can assure you, are ugly. Well, we're going to eventually get them, and when we get them, it is our intention to publicize them so people can see exactly what happened here. So Keith Davidson put out a statement today saying that he believes he's outsmarted you on this lawsuit. He welcomes the lawsuit because he says uh, this, uh, he believes that this filing constitutes a full and complete waiver of the attorney-client privilege. His spokesperson said, Attorney Davidson believes that the American people deserve to know the entire truth, and they soon will. The lawsuit has made that happen. Uh, so, Michael Avenatti, Keith Davidson is saying this was a legal mistake on your part because he is now free of his attorney-client uh, privileged uh, communication relationship with Stormy Daniels. Well, any time that Keith Davidson wants to debate the law with me, uh, Lawrence, I'd be happy to. He's just wrong yet again. I mean, this is a guy that thinks that he can be disloyal to his client and work behind her back. He's just wrong on the privilege issue. That's not uh, the waiver issue here in California. That's not what the law is. We sent a three-page letter after we saw that ridiculous statement educating Keith Davidson and his current counsel. They're just flat out wrong. And if they continue to release my client's privilege information, they're going to make things even more more difficult. You know, Lawrence, this goes hand in hand with this issue about the tapes that Michael Cohen has, uh, where he tape recorded attorney client privilege information that he was receiving from Mr. Davidson. And this lawsuit is going to provide us an avenue to get to those tapes sooner rather than later. I want to get your reaction to a couple of things Rudy Giuliani said today. He was speaking in Israel at a paid speaking engagement in Israel. One thing he said about Melania Trump was, quote, she believes her husband and she knows it's untrue, meaning the Stormy Daniels story. Now, uh, Donald Trump has never publicly said that he did not have sex uh, with Stormy Daniels. So what is Rudy Giuliani talking about there? It's an interesting question, uh, Lawrence. You know, I, I wonder if when Michael Cohen met with the First Lady in March, I wonder if he bothered to tell her that he had been working to put my client on Hannity um, some six weeks earlier. I doubt it. Um, I wonder if he provided all of the facts to her. I doubt it. Uh, I, I find it very hard to believe that the First Lady has all of the facts, and I actually think that if someone on her staff or even her, uh, if she reads these text messages, she's probably been quite a bit educated today uh, as it relates to what happened What here. was Stormy Daniels' reaction to when she heard that Michael Cohen had her booked on Sean Hannity's show? Well, she doesn't have any recollection of anybody contacting her about going on Sean Hannity's show, so th this came as a surprise to her. But I will tell you, she is incredibly upset, as any client would be, to read these text messages and see uh, the conduct of her lawyer and the conduct of Michael Cohen. How long have you been in possession of, the, of these text messages that you released today? I've been in possession of those text messages approximately two and a half weeks, Lawrence. I should have had them uh, three months ago. <laughs> Michael Avenatti, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.